Welcome again. So the next talk is why point releases are important and how you can help prepare them by Utkarsh. So Utkarsh is a 20 year old undergrad and one of our youngest Debian developers in India. He maintains a bunch of packages in the Ruby team, in, uh, in the Node team and a bunch of other stuff. So let's hear it out and you can use the etherpad or the IRC channel to ask as many questions as you want. So let's begin. Hello. Welcome to this talk titled Why Point Raises Are Important and How Can You Help Prepare Them? So I'll start by talking a little bit about me. I'm, a, I'm of course, a 21-year-old undergrad student. I've been a DD since December 19. I contribute to a bunch of open source projects. I did GSOC in 2019, 2020, both with Debian, and I write CV patches for Debian LTS and ELTS. I also go by the handle Utkarsh to Gundir across the web. So what are point releases? You know, even stable is updated once in a while, often in a time span of around two to three months. These updates are called point releases. But what's so special about them? Huh? They usually incorporate the security fixes released until the time of the update and fixes for important bugs in the current release. So let's say you're using a fresh release of Buster. So that would be Debian 10.0, right? And you use some package, let's say X, and it would be, and there would be some minor security bugs um, issued against those against that package that you're using. Um, why not? I'm I'm talking particularly about minor issues, not um, severe issues, because severe issues are always fixed by the security teams. So. Uh, let's say there are a bunch of minor issues for the package, but so wouldn't it be nice to have all of these bugs kind of fixed somehow, right? And that is where a point release comes in. A point release updates all, updates the package uh, with fixing all those all those bugs, all those crashes, all those vulnerabilities, right? So this is why a point release is important. And these are often prepared by the SRMs, Stable Release Managers. Okay, that's cool. But how exactly would a package reach there? Glad you asked. So here's a typical workflow of how a package would move between different archives and it's uploaded by whom and where, right? So we're not in talking about the security team at the moment, so let's deviate from there. So we are just focusing, focusing on the maintainer part. So the uploader is the maintainer. It could either be a single person or the package could be team maintained. So anybody can upload it, a Debian contributor, a maintainer, a developer, doesn't matter. So let's say a maintainer, maintainer, you are the maintainer, you update, uh, upload a package generally to unstable, then it's either to unstable or experimental. It then goes to testing and the testing becomes uh, the new stable. But in case of the example that I've just said before the slide, if a package is vulnerable, the maintainer would prepare proposed uh, a, a fix in the proposed updates repository and it would go to the next stable release. So that is somehow, it, it looks kind of weird, but this is what it is. It, it's kind of easy if you just get the idea with, with what you're concerned with. Don't look at the other parts, you know. Anyway, that looks interesting, I'm sold. So what are the ways to help? Glad you asked. So there are different ways to help, you know, you can help with testing or you can help ask the release team if there's anything particular they're looking for, but that's hmm, not so interesting. However, you know, there's something very important. There's one thing very important that you can help with and we really appreciate that bit of help. Not only is that interesting, but it's also really crucial. So we'd love your help preparing a package for a point of date by fixing pending CV. So point releases, as I talked about, essentially contain security fixes that are tagged as no DSA or postponed by the security team. And there are so many pending CVs in packages that you can really help us with. So from the security tracker repository from Salsa that the link I've mentioned, I just did a grab of all the no DSA or postponed issues in Buster. And guess I've got like a bunch of packages. To be more precise, I've got 358 packages that are Need, need that needs some love and support from you all. 
So now, why run these fixes exactly? As I talked previously, that if the vulnerability and uh, uh, the severity of a CVE or security bug is kind of high, then the security team would fix them by self. But there are more than 20,000 CVEs in a year. So it's kind of not possible to fix them all as, as and when they come, right? So some issues are like not really vulnerable, uh, not really severe. And it's it's good to issue a, an update once a while, maybe, but it's it's not something that would warrant an immediate fix, right? These are tagged as no DSA or postpone when you know when it's it's a good idea to take a look at them, but not really right now. So we postpone them. So all these issues can be fixed by via a point update. And this is where you can really help. Okay, but how to do that? Again, glad you asked. Step one would be to identify the package that you want to work on. Then with step two coming, check for all the no DSA postponed issues. Step three would be uh, to give a heads up to the maintainer or the team when either an email or using the BTS, that is the bug tracking service, which we all use via the email or you know any way you want. Step four would be to get the source from the stable release, let's say Buster, and backport the relevant patches of the, of the CVE let's say a particular CV here, Quilt would be our friend. Quilt is a tool that would help you um, patch and play around with patches basically. Um, and step five finally would be to prepare the depth diff and send it to the BDS. That is the, again, the bug tracker where the bug would be documented and you know other things would happen. And the maintainer, uh, you can ask the maintainer asking to review and upload, the, upload it for you. So I used a bunch of stuff which might you might not be aware of, it, but that's all right. When in doubt, always refer to DevRef. That is the um, Debian uh, Devler, developer reference. Thanks to Holger for doing such an amazing job maintaining it for over 10 years now. I've uh, given a link to the particular um, uh, section there, so you can refer to it. And yeah, basically that's that's all. That's all I really want to convey. I mean, there are so many uh, bugs that we would really appreciate your help in fixing them. And it'd be really, really great if you could take a look at some issues. Um, it's it's going to be very easy uh, now that the tracker is being improved. So you can just go to cracker.debian.org slash the package name, and you would get the number of issues um, that are tagged as no DSA or postpone, and you can help them um, with preparing a point update. And in case you have any questions or any doubts, you can always refer to DevRef, um, ask on IRC channels maybe, and um, anybody, you know, we'd love to help you out. So thank you so much for um, coming here, listening to me. In case you've got questions, you want help, you want the list of packages that need help, uh, some team maintained packages or anything, don't hesitate to contact me. You could just drop me an email at utkarsh.devin.org or you could reach me out to any public forum. I go by the handle utkarsh210 across the web. See you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cool. So thank you, Utkarsh, for that long talk. Not long to be precise, but <laughs> that talk uh, that I also believe is very important part that we should look up in Debian. Uh, so let's move to the Etherpad and have some questions. So, uh, so the first question says, why do you think point releases aren't given enough attention as of now? They still do come every once in a while. So ah, what do you okay. Um, Personally, I think first of all, when a security fixes um, is I mean, when a security bug is assigned to a package, uh, first of all, the maintainer should at least take care of that bug in a package for SID, that is, they've been unstable. Then it migrates to testing. But preparing uh, PU is kind of you know um, people get lazy sometimes. You know, it's not really a priority sometimes. Uh, when uh, the security team contacts them, then sure. The maintainers would love to work on them. Some maintainers really take care of all the point updates. But let's say, personally, I'll talk about me. I maintain like um, more than 200 packages personally. 
And if and mostly all of them are theme maintained. So if a Ruby package has some Ruby package uh, randomly gets assigned a CVE um, uh, and it would be tagged as no DSA, then I would like uh, wouldn't give it so much of a priority. Although it's it's really good to get them all fixed, but a lot of people kind of you know delay it further and keeps keeps uh, getting postponed. So I think um, that's why um, it doesn't get much attention. Those uh, since that is why the number of uh, packages that really need uh, the support and love is is kind of high. But still, like you know, maintainers are doing a, an awesome job. Even the security team does an awesome job to keep everything um, up to date uh, and fix all the CVs that are actually at least affecting um, the package or the distribution uh, altogether. So um, yeah, that is one thing that I can think of. I mean, I personally do kind of postpone the no DSA issues, uh, and then when I have enough time after like after all the work that I have to do, and if, if I still get some time, then I kind of proceed for the um, buster or you know any stable point of date uh, releases. Cool. Uh, so another question says, uh, thank you for pointing out the flow graph. Since the flow graph seems to be a bit complicated, how do you manage synchronizing with the team? Ah, OK. So uh, with the team, so I assume that the question is about a uh, team maintained package. Uh, let's say, for example, the package belongs to the Ruby team or, or the Python team, whichever. So in case, um, so there could be another uploader, you know, someone from the team who's not the uploader. And let's say it's a team maintained package. Since it's a team maintained package and the person who wants to work is not uh, the uploader, uh, then I would, how I would go about is I would just uh, either text the person on IRC, uh, that is the team uh, channel, or just drop in a mail on the mailing list, or or even the BTS, as I mentioned, on the tracker, that, hey, I am wanting to work on this and prepare a fix for this. And um, would it be OK? So just as to make sure that there are no clashes at all in the first place, once uh, it's, it's like kind of sure that uh, there will be no clashes and you're good to go, then I would just work on it, backport the patch, prepare a dev diff, send it to the BTS, get an ACK from the maintainer or, or from the uploader if, if you think there's a need to. In case you think it's all good, then you can just straight away ask for a sponsorship. And yeah, I mean, that is how team maintained packages work. Uh, it, it, it is not anybody's uh, duty to work uh, on those packages. It's just team maintained. And anybody in the team can actually work on the fix. I personally fix a bunch of uh, CVEs for um, team maintained packages, which I'm not even you know, um, doing anything for. So yeah, that is how basically we manage the synchronization using the BTS or mailing list or the IRC channel. Yeah, that does tell much about the Debian culture we have, like helping each other out in times of need and asking for help. Yeah, yeah. moving on to the next question, uh, there is a question mark slight OT. Let's take that a little later. Yeah. Uh, another question says, can we get a link of the pending or suspended packages you talked about in the talk? Um, OK, uh, it's not suspended packages, postponed packages, <laughs> all the bugs that are tagged as no DSA or uh, postponed. I will link to the security tracker. Um, OK, I'll just uh, link it up. And I'll also tell you the git grep command so it's more easier to investigate. And now the, the tracker is getting updated. It's it's like uh, getting a new kind of a UI. Uh, so the packages, if you go to any package, let's say you're interested in um, uh, a text editor called, called Wim, uh, tracker.debian.org slash Wim, you will see the no DSA uh, pending issues or whichever package you'll see that the security team has mounted no DSA and you are safe to work on it and prepare a point of date. I'll just uh, mention the link. Meanwhile, we can probably go to the next question. Yeah, you can like just add that link below the question. Yeah, sure. So uh, another question that says it is a follow up. Is it having more packages per person one of the reason for the delay? Debian need more packages uploaded. Is this the right way for like way forward? I mean, sure. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's kind of um, a trade off, I'd say. Um, 
if let's say um, Praveen does a wonderful job maintaining all the packages, I have started to maintain a lot of packages now. Uh, but you know, having all the even if I'm an uploader to a bunch of packages, I somehow miss um, the the kind of uh, a notification that hey, there's a security bug pending. And often, often uh, at times that you know a security team reaches out to us, uh, hey, this is um, this is marked as no DSA. Would it be? It would be great if you could. Uh, warrant a fix by a point of date or something, or uh, prepare a security fix, whatever. And uh, it's good to be at least fixed in unstable and testing. So, well, basically what I mean is, um, I'm not sure if it's going to help if there'll be more um, uploaders per package or um, something like that. It's just that somebody needs to take care of, um, first of all, somebody needs to be notified and it's, it's kind of hard to keep track of all the packages if the, if the number of packages the person maintains is high. In case the number of packages are low, you can always you know, uh, check the pending bugs here and there. You can always use the uh, UMD or other, other services that uh, Debian has to, to ensure that there are no pending bugs. Every CVE uh, is, uh, for every CV, uh, the security team opens a, a bug on the BTS for, against the package. So, that's one way to uh, look up the pending things that you have, and you have your own personal UMD where you can get the to-do list, and you know you can work on it. But in case you have like, um, let's say I think I have um, 300 or something like that on my um, QA page. So if I generate a to-do for them, it's going to be very very long, and I you know it's very hard to prioritize sometimes. So well, in in a way, the number of uploaders per packages would help but I'm not sure to what extent, honestly. Cool. Uh, so there is a short question which says, are all point updates only for security reasons? Um, no, uh, the short answer is no. Uh, all point updates include security fixes for sure. I mean, that's the main thing. All the security fixes are included, but let's say, uh, you know, a package called CertBot with its Acme V2 API change, you know, uh, it had to be updated. So with the point update, otherwise, you know, all the certificates would be falling out. So uh, it was uh, updated by a point update. It was not a security fix. It was just uh, to prevent the certificates from falling out. Uh, a, 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 a prepare was released for Buster. So uh, a lot of times it happens that, you know, because of something uh, or something or the other, or an application um, kind of crashes and it's rendered unusable in the in the buster or, or whatever point uh, or whatever stable release we're talking about so um all those fixes are uh, issued a point of date for for that we work on a point of date and if if it's very serious then we go by the security update that is uh, altogether a different story using buster security for buster and you know stable security that's the uh, code name um, of the archive but yeah uh, basically in short, no, not all up updates are for security. Uh, these are for normal bugs, important bugs that may arise uh, due to some regression or something like that. But um, yeah, that's the story. Yeah, that answers it well. So we have time for the slight OT question. Sure. So it says, mm -hmm. what work do you handle as an FTP training? What's the basic workflow? Ah, okay. So I haven't been very active as a trainee now. I mean, um, it was something that I used to work on, um, but right now I'm not getting enough time. But what basically FT FTP trainee does is actually when you often hear, if you've been around in Debian, you'll often hear that the new queue has been growing. FTP team did a wonderful job. It almost got down to zero at some point, I think, or even uh, just a single digit number. And FTP team do, is doing a wonderful job. But anyway, uh, the number of uh, packages that are uploading to the new queue are are a lot. You know, every day somebody is uploading something to the new queue. So um, to be able to process them, there there are FTP masters and assistants. But FTP trainee has a, for the job for FTP trainee is to like go through the package, make sure the copyright uh, files are correctly written. If there is nothing. Uh, wrong with the package, some, you know, all the things that would um, be problematic for a package to get accepted would be a job of the FTP trainee. So what work I, um, what exactly I worked on is I get the source of the uploader, see if everything's up to date, uh, like all the 
file. All the copyrights have been mentioned, the Debian copyright file, and uh, none of them has, has been missed or something like that. Or um, besides that, I used to check if there is nothing uh, non-DFSG compliant file or something that is there in the package because that's another major blocker that we see. Um, sometimes about um, people using generated files instead of like actually uh, building it from source, things like that happen all the time. So yeah, that is what I did. But FTP team does a more rigorous um, uh, kind of review. And yeah, that is why we're an FTP trainee and not a. <laughs> <laughs> like there are quite a hierarchy in the FTP team. I can see, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like quite a tough work to do. Uh, so we are almost up with the time, and we are done with all the questions. So yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, Sudkarsh, for the talk and the Q and A part, and thanks, Subin, for the direction. So Great. see you around. Thank you both. Bye bye. Have a nice bye. Day.